فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روب الخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We commence in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon the greatest of creation The most noble of all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala His companions, his household and every one of us, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and our offspring, those to come right up to the end. May Allah keep us steadfast. My beloved brothers and sisters, we need to realize the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that descends upon a gathering of this nature. The ahadith, the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, wherein mention is made of how those who have gathered in the house of Allah, those who have gathered in order to study the Qur'an, those who have gathered in order to remember Allah, those who have gathered in order to gain closeness to Allah, those who have gathered in order to learn from the ilm and the knowledge that was revealed by Allah through the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa they are encircled by the angels. The mercy of Allah, the calmness from Allah descends upon them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making mention of them to those with Him who are far higher than us here. And this is why an effort is required to attend programs of this nature. And every time there is a good program, through which we will be gaining closeness to Allah, shaitan becomes upset. He doesn't want us to achieve the calmness we so desperately need. He doesn't want us to achieve the contentment that we have to be having in order to survive. He doesn't want us to develop a relationship with Allah or to improve on our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So any excuse starting from laziness going all the way down to finding fault with the event itself will always be part and parcel of the plot of shaitan. Those who have fallen have fallen and those who have made the effort shall achieve the mercy of Allah. And therefore, even if we are listening in on a radio or any other means from a distance, if we are nearby and made an effort to attend an event or a program, especially if it were in the masjid, in order to gain closeness to Allah, it would be better to actually attend in person. Just like it is far better to read the Quran from a mushaf, then on your phone, although both are permissible, one is better than the other. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and may He open our doors. We as Muslimin believe in two sentences. That's what grants us entry into the fold of Islam. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Two sentences, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. La ma'buda bihaqqin illa Allah. No one is worthy of worship besides Allah. By that sentence, I am declaring that I will never ever render an act of worship for anyone or anything besides Allah. That's the true meaning of la ilaha illallah. The second sentence, Muhammadun Rasulullah. I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah, the one who was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am a part of his ummah and I consider it an honor, the greatest of all honors to be a part of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Without these two sentences together, we cannot be calling ourselves Muslimin. Yes, indeed, we believe in all the other messengers of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> but the uniqueness <coughs> of what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has for us 
is that he was chosen to be the final Nabi of Allah. People say, why was he chosen to be the final Nabi of Allah? Because Allah's decision is final and he chose it. That's it. I surrender. I am happy. We have firm belief in the messengership of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we believe that he is the greatest of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah. Tilka rusulu faddalna ba'dahum ala ba'd minhum man kallama Allah wa rafa'a ba'dahum darajat. Allah says the messengers we have given some greater virtue over the others. Some Allah has spoken to and he has raised the level of some above others from the messengers of Allah. There is another verse that, that Allah says, لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِّن رُسُلِهِ We don't distinguish in belief between or any of the messengers. That is not speaking about the rank of the messengers. But believing in the messengers, I believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I believe in Jesus, may peace be upon him. Isa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Harun alayhi salam, Sulaiman alayhi salam, Adam alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam, Yahya alayhi salam, and all of those. I believe in belief that they are all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa taala. If I were to remove one of them, there is something wrong with my belief in Allah. But as for the rank between the messengers of Allah, Allah makes it clear, some we have raised above others. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have raised him higher than all of our creation. We believe that. We believe that. So the greatest honor that I have is the fact that I am a member of the ummah. The greatest honor that we have is that we are followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah has chosen us, a lot of us from birth, and a lot of us later on. Either way, we are still members of the ummah. I don't know of a single person who truly utters, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger of Allah. And he hates the prophet of Allah. I don't know of even one. No one who utters the shahada would hate the messenger of Allah. Every single person who says that shahada loves the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa We love Allah. We love the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa How much love? More than ourselves, more than our fathers, more than our mothers, more than our wealth, more than our children, more than everyone and anyone else. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the highest. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ولده ووالده والناس أجمعين. None of you are true believers until I, meaning the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is more loved. With him, then his own father, his own children, and all the people in existence. Subhanallah, I bear witness to that. But shaitan comes to us and makes us think this one doesn't love the Prophet. ﷺ. Why? He perhaps shows his love in a different way. He perhaps shows his love in a more unique way. Perhaps, according to him, this is the way he would like to show the love of the Messenger. ﷺ. We believe. That those who are the closest to the Prophet ﷺ are those who try their best to emulate every movement of his and his entire living, his words, his method. Imagine the Prophet ﷺ, he was described as Rahmah lil Alameen. Have you thought of that? It means the mercy, not just to mankind, but to all creatures at the same time. He says, Wallahi inni la a'rifu hajaran bi makkata kana yusallimu alayya. Wallahi inni la a'rifu. Wallahi, I know a stone. I know a stone or a little rock in Makkah that used to greet me when I used to pass. The Prophet you said this. He has spoken to animals as well. There was a camel that spoke to him. And subhanallah, this was the messenger who was sent as mercy, not just to us, but to entire creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-alameen, all those at the time, whoever and whatever Allah had made, the Prophet sallallahu a mercy. He was taught and he was given and he gave us and he taught us. 
in the best possible way and he definitely has taught us that the closest from amongst you to me is the one who follows me in the closest fashion may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us so to claim the love of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam or to claim to be part of his sunnah yet we are vulgar with the words we use is a far cry very far the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says not only him but a mu'min a believer is never vulgar with his mouth he never uses derogatory words he never uses cheap abusive hurtful words no matter what you would like to say if you don't say it respectfully you there is something wrong with your love of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam people harmed him physically he never swore them back he never belittled them by saying words that were cheap and low but we do it in his name we do it in his name and we claim to be doing it to defend him we are swearing one another may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us it's far from islam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he dealt with abu jahl the worst the firaun of the umma the pharaoh of the umma he dealt with people like khalid ibn al-walid initially who had actually killed so many muslims he dealt with people like abu sufyan who was the leader of the makkan army for some of the battles but he never used cheap words with them hence a lot of them turned to islam he always used the highest words so if you really love the messenger you want to know who he is you need to try to live according to what he has lived by all his life sallallahu alaihi wasallam my beloved brothers my sisters the beauty of the deen is manifest the difficulty with us we claim to be muslimin but we have not submitted i always say if you translate the word muslim into english you will probably feel like a hypocrite if someone says what religion do you belong to you say i'm a muslim take a moment and translate that say it in english i am a submitter ha ah, you really a submitter do you really submit the answer will be <coughs> <clears throat> that's the answer why you're clearing your throat you know have you submitted i'm a submitter what is the meaning of islam al istislamu lillah to submit to allah the messenger was chosen by allah the greatest of creation the one who was free not only from negativity in character but even perfection in his own appearance and he, in his body perfect subhanallah they used to say ka'annahu qit'atu qamarin when we used to look at the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam as though he was the, a part of the moon allah describes him inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashshiran wa nadhira o messenger we have sent you as a witness for them or against them inna arsalnaka shahidan we have sent you bearing good news for them give them good news they will get jannah they need to have hope they should do good as best as they can they should seek forgiveness of allah they will definitely achieve the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nadhiran warn them as well that there is a punishment if you don't turn wa da'iyan ila allah bi idhni wa sirajan munira allahu akbar Allah says by the will of Allah you are a caller towards Allah my brothers and sisters amongst us everyone needs to be a caller to Allah you must call to Allah don't think that i can't call to Allah if you're a muslim your character alone to start with should be outshining the character of everyone else such that when those who hate the muslims see you they will change their minds they will change their minds people judge us based on what we look like the longer the beard the more hatred they have but imagine if your character is immaculate and if you deal with people you start off with a smile you are honest you make things clear to the people you interact with be it at work be it at home be it with the people who are working for you or whom you are working for or those around you we are living in countries predominantly non muslim it's our opportunity you cannot say i'm not a caller you are a caller because you're a follower of islam i'm a caller you're a caller the problem with us 
When they hear of fraud, they hear Muslim names. When they hear of hijackings, they hear Muslim names. When they hear of so many other things, they hear of Muslim names, criminal behavior, Muslim names. We need to change that. The Prophet ﷺ was the highest, the highest of all, completely. In fact, Allah has protected him from all negativity. So much so, when they tried to swear, they tried to mock, they tried to scoff at, they tried to do so many things, they tried to kill him as well. Allah says, we have protected you and not just you, even your reputation. They will never be able to damage or harm the reputation. Every time someone tries to harm or damage the reputation of Rasulullah in essence, they've harmed themselves. They have harmed themselves. Allah promises, Inna kal O Messenger, وسلم, we have protected your reputation. We have protected you from the scoffing of those who scoff, those who mock, those who jeer, those who joke about in a negative way, you are protected, don't worry. Subhanallah. How many cartoons have they produced which are blasphemous? Did it damage the reputation of the messenger? Sallallahu alayhi wa If anything, more people accepted Islam. How many videos have they produced? Blasphemous. How many dirty comments the people have? Blasphemous. Just like Allah protected the Kaaba from damage and harm of Abraha, Allah has protected in an even greater way the reputation of the Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It does not need you or me. It doesn't need you and I. It actually is an honor for us to defend the dignity of Rasulullah Sallallahu the more I live with the messenger's way, automatically I've defended his sunnah and his style. But if I were to swear and shout and scream and burn tires and effigies and whatever else you have and claim that that is the method that I'm choosing to defend the honor of my messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I've made a mistake because that was not his way. When problems came in his direction, fazi'a ila salah. First thing he did was to read Salah. Subhanallah. How many of us are regular with five Salah? How many of us consider it an honor to fulfill Salah? Or how many of us just get done with it? We might argue, I read five Salah a day. But do you do it to get done with it? Or do you do it considering it an honor? When you do it considering it an honor, you enjoy the wudu prior to the Salah. You enjoy it. When you've enjoyed the wudu, you know that you are heading in the right direction. Then you take your time with your salah. You tell yourself, I know I've got to do three subhana rabbi al azims but I'm going to do five. Why? I love Allah. I love the messenger. I want to be with Rasulullah sallallahu on the day of Qiyamah and beyond. That is now heading in the right direction. Take your time. Salah is your connection. It is a gift given to Rasulullah sallallahu and his ummah. Do you consider it a gift or a burden? You might be fulfilling it, but your attitude towards it and mine can improve by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah tells the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you know what? We have protected your reputation. I promise you by Allah, my brothers, my sisters, if you are serving the deen of Allah and you are trying to follow the footpath of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the proper way, no matter what people have to say about you, close your eyes and keep on following the correct path. Allah will protect you just like he protected the others. Allah will grant you that on the day of judgment, you will see the reward. Don't fall with those who have fallen because indeed the falling is from shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lofty rank of Jannah. My brothers and sisters, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his struggles are recorded, yet he was the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah. No matter what problem you and I face, the Messenger ﷺ has already been through it and he has dealt with it. And the reason why Allah chose his most beloved to go through it was because Allah wanted us to follow his example. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ 
Indeed, in the life of the Messenger, وسلم, in the person of the Messenger, وسلم, is the most perfect example to be emulated by whom? By those who believe in Allah, those who are looking forward to the meeting with Allah. If you're not looking forward to the meeting with Allah, you won't be interested in following the Messenger. Not everyone will be on your level. Just like you were astray a few years ago and Allah gave you guidance to come to the masjid, for example. There are others who are also astray. Allah might keep them astray for 70 years. But if the day comes, as the hadith makes mention, that towards the end of the life of a 70-year-old who was engaged in sin throughout those 70 years, one turn has to happen in the right direction, the person will enter Jannah. And 70 years of ibadah, one turn in the wrong direction, who knows where that person is going to go. May Allah keep us from those who are steadfast. So be patient. Be lenient on those who are around you who might not be on your level. Don't use harsh, hard, cutting words because one of the signs of the mercy of Allah is when you are lenient. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ O Messenger, it is because of the mercy of Allah upon you that you are lenient. What does that mean? When you are lenient, it's a sign of the mercy of Allah on you and on I. When you are harsh and hard-hearted, they will disperse. It's a sign that you are void of the mercy of Allah. The Quran says, وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ if you were harsh, if you were harsh with a hard heart, they would have dispersed. No one would want to listen. No one would even want that guidance. So the mercy of Allah is when you are calm, when you are lenient, when you pray for people whom you see doing wrong before you even approach them in a positive way. That's the sunnah. The Prophet ﷺ elevated so high. I want to tell you, we believe yaqeenan with total conviction that the best of creation, the most loved unto Allah, the most highest in rank of all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was Muhammad ﷺ. Don't you believe that? Yes. Guess what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for him the most challenging life from all of us. He loved it. He was okay with it. He was content. Look at the day of Ta'if. Has Ta'if happened to you? The answer is no, it happened to him. Look at the day of Ta'if. He was so, so saddened by what they did to him. But he said, Oh Allah, if you are pleased with me, there is nothing else that I require. For as long as you are happy with me, what I'm going through is nothing. Subhanallah. We go through challenges in our lives. If you are happy with Allah and Allah is happy with you, trust me that challenge is nothing. He lost his children, his sons, one after the other in his life. He did not complain to Allah. He didn't question Allah. You have lost a child. It's the most difficult thing you're going to ever go through in terms of loss of life because they are the closest to you. But remember, the one better than you, closer to Allah than you, the closest to Allah has been through much more than that. You are having financial difficulty. The messenger, peace be upon him, has been through Sanctions in a way that they were eating leaves from a tree for three years in Shi'ab Abi Talib in Mecca. He lost his wife, he lost his uncle, he lost his grandfather earlier, he was born an orphan, he lost his mother. How many of us are orphans here? Small number. We make it seem like Qiyamah has come, but that could just be a sign that Allah loves you more than the others. In Allah, إِذَا أَحَبَّ عَبْدًا ابْتَلَاهُ When Allah loves his slave, Allah tests him. I want to tell you something. Today, we have lost the plot. We have lost the plot. How many of us run behind the latest car? Listen carefully. Remember the questions I'm asking. How many of us run behind the latest car, the latest phone, the latest air condition, the latest carpets, the latest kitchens, the latest bathrooms, the latest furniture, etc., etc. Every one of the things I've mentioned 
The Prophet ﷺ did not have those. Allah chose for the one he loved the most never to have a mobile phone, never to have the internet, never to ever have a tap from which there was running water because that was irrelevant when it came to the decree and the happiness of Allah. Allah chose for him never to sit in an aircraft. If Allah wanted, he could have kept him such that he could have had more than that. Way beyond. We are running behind things that the best and the closest to Allah never ever had. They are irrelevant material items that are not important at all when it comes to your relationship with Allah. And Allah tells Muhammad وسلم, in the most beautiful way. O Messenger, all glory be to Allah, whom, if He willed, He would have given you much better than all of that gardens beneath which rivers would be flowing, etc., etc. O Messenger, Allah is all able and capable if He wanted to have given you better than all of that. But these materialistic items of the dunya, they are not of importance. What is of importance is how close you are to Allah. This is why there are people who sleep on the water mattresses, the latest technology of the age, but they are struggling to fall off to sleep. And there are others who are under the trees and they are snoring with the best sleep because Allah is showing you that it's got to do with your contentment, with your closeness unto Allah. Leave things in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're sitting Celebrating the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's not one day in the year. It's not one month in the year. It's not one week in the year. It is the whole year. For you and I, every day is a celebration of the of the birth of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. For you and I, we know that that is whom we will be following. Look at the examples. This is why we are studying his life. The point I've raised to you, perhaps today, you haven't ever thought of. To tell you what you have. The messenger peace be upon him. Allah knowing that he was the best. Didn't even bother to give it to him. This is not important. Rolex. We fight for a Rolex. What Rolex? They used to look at the sun and the moon. And tell the time of the day. They enjoyed it. Allah says that was the best of creation. The one I loved the most. For us we believe that. He didn't even have a carpet like this to sit on. Not even a tap to open. They all, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, the Tabi'een, the Tabi'a Tabi'een, the Tabi'a Tabi'a Tabi'een, all the generations up to very recently, they used to get water from the wells. They used to start the fires with, you know, bringing the friction of two things together. They used to ride camels and donkeys and so on. Up to recently, in fact, up to today, there are people doing it. We call them backward. But in the eyes of Allah, who knows, they might be the most forward and the closest to Allah. The point I'm raising is technology is good. It's not bad. Only if it is used to bring you closer to Allah. That's what it is. If it is used to distract you from Allah, you've lost. It's not something you should be running after as though you have now forgotten that the true thing I'm supposed to be running after is Jannatul Firdaus. The Sunnah of Muhammad Wasallam. Today we pay lip service claiming the love. But Wallahi, we love materialistic items. We love things that have no co connection to the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us appreciate the technology and the facility that we have. Like I said, it's a good thing if it is used in a good way. So this is the messenger. This is whom we are talking about. This is why we will be hearing the lectures of the ulama going through various aspects of his life because every breath of his was a lesson for us. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every hair on his head and on his beard we can talk about. It's a lesson for us. It would be an act of worship to speak about what he looked like. Subhanallah. It's an act of worship to speak about every single aspect of his existence, including what his eyes were like. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, the honor, the honor is all ours. Subhanallah. No matter what we do, we are not going to increase or decrease the value of Allah or His Messenger. 
it is already there. It is already the highest. It is already at its status. If you say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah says, we will bless you tenfold. Why? You need it more than him. Allahu Akbar. We will bless you tenfold. Man salla alayya wahidatan, sallallahu alayhi biha ashra. Whoever sends blessings and salutations upon me once, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is saying, Allah will bless him tenfold. Why? Because it is the honor of Allah to say, well, if you are acknowledging the status of whom we have bestowed status upon, you deserve a higher status. Because Iblis's crime was that he did not acknowledge the status of Adam. Let's not be from among those who don't acknowledge the status of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We don't want to be cursed. That's why, and I will end on this point, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, destruction be upon the one who hears my name and does not say sallallahu alayhi wasallam with it. Don't be shy to say sallallahu alayhi wasallam as often as you can. And whenever you hear his name, say it. If you say it slightly louder, you will encourage a lot of others around you to say it. Learn to live his life. Learn to study every aspect of his life. And remember, be calm, respect people, because the people who are the furthest away, if Allah uses you to guide them a notch, it's better for you than the materialistic provisions of this world that the world can throw at you. Remember that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us to bring people closer to Him. And in the process, may we also become closer to Him, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.